Well, hello. I am lucky to have Aileen White with me. Now, me and Aileen go back quite a while, almost five years since I've met you, uh, which was at the book launch. Um, Aileen works within uh, the birth world and has been working in the birth world for quite a while. Um, pleased to have her with me. Aileen, would you say hello and a, a bit about yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm Aileen White and I, yeah, I've been working in the birth world for the last eight years. Um, I got into this because I myself was tocophobic and we've been married about, not me and Mark, but me and my husband have been married about 12 years uh, before I got the nerve up to even ask about having a baby. I knew my husband wanted a child, but I was too scared. Um, so since then, I've been overcoming that uh, tocophobia and it did mean that we went on to have two children. And then I trained under Birthing from Within, which is an amazing American organization that really looks at how birth transforms us as people and right. is an opportunity, a rite of passage, an opportunity to discover more about who we are and the difference we can make in the world, really. Right. So, yeah, birthing from within as an approach is probably the heart of everything I do. And then because I am a very spiritual person, kind of um, spirituality and emotions and how the experiences we have change and transform us is at the heart of a lot of what I do with. Right. So, OK, so you've you've, you've raised a, a few things there. So yeah. tocophobic. Mm before you'd had a baby yes primary how, tocophobia how, how did you manage that now we know in the uk that primary tocophobia is going up yeah all right yeah. so c can you talk to the primary tocophobia what what yeah. what do you think um generated that fear of birth given that you hadn't had the experience yeah yeah i i did quite a lot of work on this and as i was uh, pregnant with my second child I, what I discovered using some hypnotherapy techniques is that I had mashed together the stories of my mum's birth experiences ah. with what I'd seen on television in films. Mm. So when she talked about uh, being in labour for 24 to 48 hours, I'd mixed that with images of women screaming on a bed, not getting help, not... Right sometimes not being supported or everyone flapping around her. Um, and I had this image that a woman in labor and birth was just 24 to 48 hours of suffering. Right. And I could not comprehend why anyone in the world would be stupid enough to go there. <laughs> um, and I guess in a way I was a little bit arrogant in a way. I was like, well, just why would you do it? Um, yeah. And I knew that other people couldn't understand why I thought that way, but I couldn't understand why they thought differently. Yeah. I was like, why would you want to suffer? No. You know, just why? So I, I, it was like my brain was collecting lots and lots of evidence of suffering, difficulty, horror stories, and it, just to emphasize and build up my case for not going there in the first yeah. place. Well, you, but you, I suppose your brain was doing what, what the brain does in order to help us survive yes absolutely <laughs> and it wasn't yeah. until you did that hypnosis work that you were able to piece that together yes yeah and there was a number of steps before that in terms of discovering that there was more to the story about birth and about becoming a parent and and part of that was talking with a doctor part of that was doing antenatal classes reading some hypnobirthing books um, and then later doing the birthing from within training. Did, did the birthing within, uh, I want to talk more about that, but did, did yeah. the birthing within discovery happen before you gave birth the first time or in between first and second? Yeah, I read Birthing from Within uh, between the first and the second. So Pam England uh, has written two versions of Birthing from Within. I read the first version uh, in uh, probably about eight years ago. Right. Uh, did, did her training when they came to the UK to train. You can see me looking around because I'm trying to find my copy. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm ill prepared, but yeah, yeah, no, I've read it. I like it. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of resonance with the model of NLP in birthing within. Very much so. Yeah, and Pam so. does go with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you just it's American, isn't it? 
Yes. Yeah. Go on. No, I was going to say, tell us a little bit about Birthing Within as an organisation and your yeah. involvement with the, with them. Yeah. So Birthing From Within was started by Pam England. She herself was a midwife who was very zealous for natural birth and believed if you thought the right things, did the right things, you'd get an amazing birth. And then had a really horrific first birth experience herself. And it meant it kind of caused a real crisis of identity and belief in her. And it took her about seven years to work through that, to discover who she was and what birth is, which I think is still obviously ongoing in terms of that discovery afterwards. And then birthing from within came out of that work, that inner work about well, what, what is birth if it's not controllable? And what wow. is birth if it's not just about the head knowledge that you can read in a book or learn from a class? Um, and Pam is a very creative woman. So she uses a lot of birth art, games, visualization, creativity, music, dance. It's a really holistic approach to preparing yourself for the transformation that birth brings. Wow. And then the more recent kind of um, evolution, birthing from within, it's now got a whole board of a board of dreamers, they're called, which I, right. I just love, the board of dreamers who now run Birthing From Within. You've still got the beautiful creativity and um, seeing birth as a rite of passage and an opportunity for transformation. Um, and also they're very, very um, pro-supporting minority groups. So right. they actively will help people from ethnic groups or LGBT. BTQI kind of groups to train in birth work. Right. So that's excluded. One of them more, right. So they're focusing on ex excluded groups. Yeah. As well as as mainstream, you know, a, a woman being pregnant or perhaps a married couple um, having a baby, they also very much want to support those excluded right. uh, smaller groups as well. Yeah, got it. No, that's great. Yeah. Did you at this point become a birthing within practitioner or did, did you have to? you know, join the organization and stuff like yeah. that? It actually took a really long time. I attended the three day training, which was really thorough. And then it was three years after that in becoming a basic mentor, kind of their, their lowest level mentor. And then I did another three years after that to become an advanced birthing from within mentor. Wow. And then that included lots of learning about visualization, hypnotherapy, NLP, um, techniques to lead classes to help people who feel traumatized nice. um, and birthing from within is something you you almost become a member and it becomes part of your life because a yeah. lot of the techniques are transferable to your whole life yeah. and you can continue your membership and affiliation with them with the ongoing training the monthly training you get with that right. to develop your learning ongoing and is that what you've done or have you used that as a springboard to do your own thing yeah both i i do continue um to check in with them i am still a member and um, i am still an advanced uh, birthing from within mentor but i do now add lots of other things in with what i'm doing and it has affected and changed helped me you know and changed me and when i come across other intense or difficult situations in my life a lot of the birthing from within approaches apply now. So um, moving to a very different area of the country, um, having a diff very different way of life. Mm. Um, and I think in the future, you know, if I suffer grief, perhaps with a parent dying or something like that, which is going to come at some point, it's going to be helpful again. Yeah. And now I don't know how, I, I don't know, I'll ask the question. I mean, you, you're a vicar's wife. Yeah. <laughs> within I didn't the, intend that <laughs> within within the Church of England. Yeah, uh, can you can you talk a little bit about you know the work you do and and uh, your role as uh, the vicar's wife is a role in a way, isn't it? Or is it? <laughs> well, I think that's what can be quite confusing. Some people think it's a role and expect you to play a role, right. and then some people think it's not a role and will tell you. 
well, you're just like, uh, you know, you moved here and it's like your husband's a head teacher and you're just the, the, the rest of the family and, yeah. you know, he's doing a job. Yeah. And I think that's what can be confusing because you have your own expectations yeah. and then a mixture of what all the other people's expectations are too. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think that's that's been quite confusing actually the last three years is those I different well i know i know i know you're moving into a you know a new place yeah uh, do, do you have any plans about how you're going to be very clear in terms of establishing whether you have a role or not yeah i think um going forward my birth uh, which is my organization and i use yeah. birthing from within in my birth my birth has recently become a cic so where my birth supports cic and that means that we can be linked with other organizations if we want to but right. we are actually an organization in ourselves what, what's um, what's a, what's a cic so it's a community interest company right and it means that I can apply for grants and some other things like a charity might, but myself as a director can still have a say in how the organization is developed. Right. And I can still be paid for the work I do. Right. Whereas if I was a charity, I would have to give the kind of governance over to trustees if I was going to continue working for them and be paid. Right. So it's a way of staying central to your organization but be able to still have grants and things like that uh, and different from a limited company so you, you don't yeah. have to have shares or no there are no shares with a cic if your cic shuts down then it all all of your assets will go to a um a charity that you have named so there's a thing called an asset lock and anything that's left from my birth when it finishes will go to pandas actually pandas was the okay. organization we chose um, and any decision we make, I I vote on with my directors. There's four of us right. at the moment. You have to have at least three. Um, and because of that, because of the directors, no one has shares, no one makes a profit, and the assets will go to another charity. Got it, it means you can be a CIC. Got it. But yeah, as director, you can be paid out of the funding that's in um, the company's bank account. Yes, got yep. it. That because you're really carrying out the work that you do. Yeah, well, that sounds really exciting. What what kind of work does your birth do? Yeah, so my birth, um, we have uh, support antenatally, postnatally, and for those living with loss. And then on a weekly basis, I offer maternal journal sessions, which are a lovely way in to kind of reflecting on and thinking about your birth journey. Right. So antenatally, I use a lot of the birthing from within resources as they are written. So it's helping prepare people with coping techniques, understanding about the physiology of birth and hormones and positions for birth and things. And it's also about helping them deal with and be free from fears about birth before it unfolds. So they're as flexible and creative as they can be approaching birth as possible. Wow. Um, so that's antenatally. And then postnatally, perhaps similar to you, Mark, it's a lot of one-to-one um, -one or group work helping people come to terms with a past experience yeah. that is troubling or traumatic or difficult um, and helping with lots of different types of techniques to be free from that experience. Brilliant. And um, given that it's, uh, you, you know, the company is a CIC, that, that means that you're you're reaching out to, to people that potentially wouldn't have the resources to access this kind of support otherwise. Yes. Yeah, we're able to offer all the places either free at a reduced rate or uh, a rate that's still less than a secular course but yeah. is a little bit more reflective of somebody perhaps in a f professional career who can actually pay yeah. so it's either on a pay what you can basis or free if you're on a low income yeah that's fantastic yeah. and a yeah. as a practitioner i i'm guessing that brings a lot of freedom yes it does it does i i yeah, definitely. Because I know if as long as we've got grants, then I will still I will or other people will still be paid for doing the work they do and be recognized for that work they do. With, yeah. the, with a, a not it's I mean, at the moment, 
it's a reasonable income. It's not reflective of what a, a therapist or someone would be no. charged or an educator, but it does recognize in some ways. Yeah. And then, but if someone comes to me and says, I really need this and I'm ready, um, yeah. but I can't pay, we've just been made redundant or something yeah. like that, I can say, come anyway. Yes. Just come anyway, get a free ticket, let's, let's do it. Although I've, I, I've made a, a shift myself in fairly recent times. Mm. Um, you know, what I do is I charge for. Mm. Um, but if someone feels a calling, it sounds so cheesy. <laughs> but if someone feels like this is something they want to do to be of service, you know, I say pay what you can afford as a deposit. Yes. And then pay whatever you can afford monthly until it's paid. So effectively, that does leave it open to anyone. Yes, Because absolutely. if you can afford nothing. You can still come. <laughs> you can still come. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, yeah. it, it's a desire in me to make this available to everyone that wants to do it yes. while still being able to meet my own bills. Yes, because that's vital. We can't carry on being uh, birth worker volunteers if we can't pay our own bills. No, that's true. Yeah. I want to I want to start to explore some of the work you do because you know I've worked been aware of you and kind of worked with you for, for quite a while mm -hmm. and, and been impressed with uh, the, your ability to innovate <laughs> and in particular uh, there was something you asked me about um, mm -hmm. that you thought uh, I had taught and it turns out I didn't yeah. uh, but when you shared it with me I said oh, god that is amazing and I want to talk to you in a podcast about it and share it with the with the world, if you like, or at least with those that listen to this podcast. Yeah. Would you would you tell the story of this yes. and and give an introduction to it? Because I, I think people are going to benefit greatly from it. Yeah. So it, it's lovely hearing you say that I'm an innovator. Um, I think that comes from I my background is I'm a design and technology teacher. Mm. And I did a four year degree in how to teach design and technology. And because of my design background, I do very naturally take ideas and apply them to new situations. I, I just do it without thinking. So when I heard you shared in one of your weekly or by oh, it was an email, emails, yeah. Yeah. you shared the idea of helping people um, think about their birth experience and first write down or Maybe you didn't even say it. No, just I didn't think say about, that. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> just think about what happened to you in terms of facts. If you were a fly on the wall, who, who said what? Who did what? Who came in and out of the room? What did they do? What did they say? As if you were just observing the facts. Right. And then consider what, how it made you feel or the story you're telling yourself about right. it. And when I read that idea, I was just like, oh. I go, I'm going to use that this week. I'm going to use that in my birth group and, and let, let's run with this. So what I did was I, I made, a, I actually, I use a lot of journaling and birth art in the work I do, which I've already mentioned. So I made a table for the people I was working with to use. And the first column was what actually happened. And the second column was how I felt. Right. And, and we actually worked on that. And I then sent them away and said, please add to it during the week. And when you come back next week, we'll spend the first half hour debriefing on it and just see what you notice. Just experiment with it like you always invite us to do. Mm. And then as the discussions came back, we added a third column, which was what I believe about myself. Because as they started to talk all these beliefs came up. So such and such said this, I felt scared and I believed I was going to die, you yeah. know, or such and such did this. I felt belittled and I felt I was worthless. So it became three columns. And then when I was working with a lady earlier, it was last year, she added a fourth column, which was fantastic. She added what I wish had happened because her birth was 22 years ago, I think it was. Yeah. And there was no way she couldn't even get her birth notes, never right. mind talk to the midwife. And she, so she added a column at the end that said what I wish had happened at each of these stages. And she, she, she just ran with it. It was amazing. Pages and pages and pages of what happened, what I felt, right. what I believed about myself and what I wish had happened. And it, it really set her on a path of, 
feeling able and ready to then work through the rest of it. And she is going on to do more since right. then. And now that's part a central part of what I use in my birth recovery courses or series is with one to ones. Yeah. To, to give people different ideas about how to process what happened. So they could write a long story. They could put lots of different bits on post-it notes and then rearrange the post-it notes. They could use a big piece of paper and draw something like a journey and label yeah. up the journey. Um, they could do a, a mind map or a spider diagram, or they could use this table yeah. and write it in columns. And actually what I'm finding is a lot of people like this table idea. They yeah. really do. <laughs> I do. I wish I could claim it as my own, but um, I, 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 this is all you. <laughs> it, it, do you have um, a web page or somewhere that people could interact with you and see what you're doing? Yeah. So um, in terms of being of website, it's mybirth.org.uk. So that, that's easy to remember, right. mybirth.org.uk. In terms of Facebook, we're mybirth, um, and it's a group, but it's a public group. So you right. can see it even without joining us, but it's great if you want to join us, that'd be fab. And then on Instagram, it's mybirthsupport. Um, and between the words, it's a, a lower a lower line. Um right. Yeah, so they're the places we That's are. That's great. On. Now, I, I want to ask you a, a question, because I, I can imagine there is potentially someone listening listening to us talk mm -hmm. who, who has had a birth experience and is suffering. Mm -hmm. You know, however they um, describe their suffering, that, you know, they're, they're feeling the effects of a birth experience and and they want to move on you know they they they, they want things to be different but what would be your not advice but what would be your direction to them as as something they could do as a first step yeah so first steps um that i work with kind of when i'm working with someone like you and i first i want to say i'm really sorry that you've had an experience that you're suffering with. I'm really sorry you're in that position. Um, I want to say to you, you're not alone. Tragically, you yeah. are not alone. And there yeah. are thousands of people in a similar position. Yeah. It's wonderful that you're ready to do some work on this. And it's really good that you're ready. But I know that could feel really vulnerable for you. Um, but what I invite you to do, if you feel like to start with you just want to do something at home without contacting someone else then i invite you to get yourself a sketchbook and some colors and paper and start journaling about what happened if you tend to not be a writing -y, drawing -y kind of person then if you have someone who you trust and has actually got capacity to listen then ask them to take some time to listen to you or there are organizations who have phone lines. So some of those charities about birth trauma have phone lines and you can phone them. So if you're more an auditory kind of person and you do talking, then perhaps pick up the phone and talk to them or someone like the Samaritans and be listened to. Mm. Or, or call somebody like Mark or myself yeah. and say, I am suffering and I am ready and I want to do something about this. Can you help me? Yeah. And set up the opportunity one-to-one. -one to do some work. Um, I, I have found that when you are ready, there are loads of ways that we can help you. And it's not always about talking and reliving what happened. And it's not always about coming to therapy and um, going over and over and over it and trying to fix yourself. Mm. Often, if you've had an overwhelming experience, then you're having a really sensible, logical reaction to an overwhelming experience. So your, your feeling of overwhelm, upset, sadness, depression, is actually quite a logical response to what's happened to you. It's not that yeah. you need fixing. It's that you've had a really challenging time. Yeah. And so you need support to work through that. And that's normal. Yeah. You know? So be gentle with yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Find a way to be heard whether that's through a journal, through a person or an organization, or someone like me and Mark who are here to help you and can teach you strategies 
that you can use to help yourself. Yeah. Oh, well, that's too perfect to say much else afterwards. <laughs> uh, a Aileen, thank you for being willing to, c to come on today. And <laughs> the birth notes, uh, sorry, the birth notes, the show notes will include um, all the links that have been mentioned and my phone number. As Aileen has, has uh, suggested, you call me because you certainly can. Thanks for listening and thank you, Aileen. Thanks ever so much, Mark.